When it feels like it might be time Somebody gives this game a rise Throw me one across the plane Man, I put it in another state And that ain't no lie Day three in Omaha. Four teams have won. Four teams have lost. Today, two advance. One goes home. One moves closer to joining them. Back home in Omaha. Among the last pick to the field of 64, they were the first to play at the College World Series. But San Jose State faced a Clemson team that came out ready to roar. Powered by an eight-run second inning, the Tigers sent the Spartans to the losers. Bracket. Cajuns, baby. Wake up. We're sneaking up on everybody. While the team was the least likely to be here, an argument could be made their fans are having the most fun. The Raging Cajun faithful are soaking up the fun here in Omaha. But Louisiana Lafayette must win or the party's over. Day three of the 2000 NCAA College World Series continuing from Omaha. And it's our first elimination game of the series. Two teams making their first ever appearance in Omaha. One of them will be making its first ever departure. And when they arrived here last week, they dared to have visions of this scene dancing in their heads. They're going to celebrate all here in Omaha, Nebraska. They face the always daunting task of battling out of the losers' bracket. It's a double elimination format for the eight teams. Here's bracket one. Stanford defeated Clemson earlier today in the winner's draw, so the Cardinal moves to 2 0 and gets some time to rest. Clemson's next opponent will be the winner of our game tonight. The bracket two games will continue tomorrow as USC takes on LSU. Then in the elimination game, Florida State will meet Texas. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Harold Reynolds. It's great to have you with us. You never know how your team is going to react to the College World Series. But one thing is for certain, if you're coming here for the first time, on the big stage at Rosenblatt, it is very difficult to put aside the big crowd and all the other distractions of the College World Series. Well, you're absolutely right, Mike. I mean, you, you take San Jose State, for example, the average crowd at home they played in front of was 468 people. That's a little bit nerve-wracking when you come here and you're playing in front of 23,000, so it can be very difficult. is uh, the jitters more than anything, Mike. You know, Greg's awesome. Here's a perfect bunt. You got no play. Now all of a sudden the situation is, uh-oh, we're in trouble. We're in deep trouble. Well, they drop another bunt. Your pitcher uncharacteristically throws the ball away. They kick it around. This was a good defensive team. And then the second baseman sure handed. He misses the ball. Just a shaky. But to their credit, they battled back and got themselves back into the game. And so Lafayette did the same thing the other night also. Well, actually, uh, they held Clemson scoreless for the last six innings. And then Louisiana Lafayette got a great performance out of Jarvis Larry, a young man who only had 60 at bats all year, was thrown into the lineup to the last moment. And they fell only two runs short in their game. Well, Jar Lar Jar Jarvis Larry got a chance to play. He hadn't been playing a whole lot. And you know what? They went out and they changed his hair. You're probably going to ask me, changed his hair? What's that got to do with anything? Well, you know what? He went out and said, oh, I'm going to be Dennis Rodman. No, not exactly. The whole team started dyeing their hair, and Jarvis Larry dyed his hair yellow, and he hit a home run, had three hits that day, and he's back in the lineup. It's got to be the hair, Mike. Got to be. <laughs> well, we'll see what he does today <laughs> with, that, uh, with that bright yellow do. One of these teams will experience the immense joy of winning for the first time in the College World Series. The other, a Cinderella run in this tournament, San Jose State and Louisiana Lafayette. The lineups in the first pitch will be returned to the 2000 NCAA
ESPN2's presentation of the NCAA College World Series is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When the moment comes, will you have what it takes to finish? Gatorade, is it in you? And by Alliance Capital, the investment professional's choice. Welcome back to the College World Series, Omaha, Nebraska. It is Elimination Sunday for one of these teams, San Jose State and Louisiana Lafayette, both making their initial appearance ever in the College World Series. Sam Ferraro has devoted most of his life to San Jose State baseball as a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach. 14 years as a head coach, 454 games. Here's his lineup. You're not going to see a lot of the big averages you see from some of the other teams out here. Center fielder Ryan Brooker will be the leadoff hitter. A junior, also the team captain. Batting second, switch hitting Brian Stream, the second baseman. 5'3", the smallest player out here in Omaha. Batting third, right fielder Brandon Mackey, a switch hitter as well. To clean up the designated hitter, sophomore Junior Ruiz hitting 358. Batting fifth, Tony Tognetti, the third baseman. Batting sixth, first baseman, John Fagan, yet another switch hitter. Hitting seventh, senior outfielder, Rob Douglas. Eighth, the catcher, Adam Shorcher. He's a sophomore, and the number nine hitter is shortstop, Gary Patchett. They'll be going up against Scott Doman, a junior from right in Lafayette. He won the regional clinching game against East Carolina, and then the super regional title game against South Carolina. He is 12 and 5 on the season. Well, Mike, he's the sixth round draft pick of the Colorado Rockies, and the reason he pitched in game three, the coach considers him a hunter. He says he will hunt you, and that's why they wanted him in this game tonight, because it was an elimination game, and this guy is the uh, heart and soul. They say he is a bulldog and won't back down, and that's what they need tonight. Well, the first guy to stand in, Ryan Brucker, is not going to uh, back down either. A junior out of Irvine, California, the best leader on the club. 21 years old, only 5'8", 165, and he comes in hitting 294. It was two for five in his first game in the College World Series, and has four multiple big games in the postseason, so he is on at the right time and trying to help his team stave off elimination. Absolutely, Mike. You see the first pitch right there up and in, and he barely budged. We'll get to that in a second. Guys won't move in the box, will it? No, they won't. 105 hit by pitches. They will do anything to get on base. Absolutely an amazing statistic. There's a good look at Domi. There's Wiley. Fastball in on the fist. And it cuts off in the right field for a base hit. Piece of hitting by Ryan Brucker. Carol, how about good defense? Well, solid defense behind him, particularly the infield. Nathan Nelson, Rick Heidel, and Ryan Gill all drafted this spring. Great, excellent hands. And if it gets ground balls, a good chance that double play combination will be able to turn it over. Ryan Stream stands in at 5-3. They would like him to take advantage of his height a little bit more. 5-3 on the point down the ball. Tries to bunt and fouls it off. He's out of uh, Carmel Valley, California. They figure at 5-3, he needs to get a lot more base on balls than the 28 he has right now. But he wants to hit the baseball. He's listed at 5-5. Uh, and I'm sure he's pleased to death by that. <laughs> After standing next to him, I'm sure you're right. But you saw him try to bunt. San Jose State will manufacture. They'll bunt their way around the diamond. Oh, really was. And great communication. You can hear the catcher decided yelling 2-2-2 two, two, two the whole way. As soon as the ball was dropped, it's so important. How somebody telling you where to go, and now the pitcher does a great job of setting himself, but immediately he tries to butt this ball to first base after the third baseman was way in. But you see the pitcher already starting to set himself. No hesitation, Mike. He threw a strike to get the fourth. So Doman helps himself coming off the mound, and Brandon Mackey, a junior out of Santa Clara, California, stands in. He played some uh, junior college ball, Mission Junior College. Power from both sides of the field. He's a switch hitter. And hitting 
400 in the postseason in this ball club. That's second on the ball club. They only have two players in the starting line at the with 300. So these guys at the top of the order are going to have to deliver. Mackey and Junior Ruiz is the hit up cleanup man on the deck. The San Jose State will face tonight. Not a left handed batter in their order, not even one on their entire postseason roster. Steve Feehan, the center fielder, he'll hit leadoff and has in all four of his years in Lafayette. Batting second, Ryan Gill, who can play virtually any position on the field, including on the mound at second base again tonight. Batting third, Nathan Nelson, the third base by the team, the 30 on two average. Clean up hitter, Danny Maziotti, the catcher. Batting fifth, Left fielder Will Hawkins, sixth, the right fielder Tommy Clark. Batting seventh, Jarvis Larry, the DH, three for three in the opener. Batting eighth at first base, Jess Poche. Batting ninth, the shortstop, Rick Neidel. On the mound for the Spartans, Junior Joey Baker from Monterey, California. He has not gotten the run support of some of the other players from the staff. His eighth and seventh record really deceptive. Well, you're absolutely right, Mike. They have not scored a lot of runs for him. He's going to throw a fastball between 86 and 89. He'll sometimes even get up to 93, but he'll pitch 86, 89. He's got a real hard slider. That's actually what they call a slur. It's in between a curve and a slider. And his changeup became his go-to pitch down the stretch. But the key to him, Mike, is the first inning. He's got to get out of the first inning, very similar to Tom Glavin of the Atlanta Braves. If he gets out of the first inning, he's going to be all right. But if not, it could be a long evening. We are pleased, as always, to have Dave Ryan as a third member of our broadcast crew. Let's check in with him right now, David. Well, Mike, just minutes ago in the locker room here at San Jose State, just by their dugout, Sam Ferraro, the head coach, thought it was necessary really for the first time all year to challenge his team. As he said, it's time to step out and time to step up. Now, this wasn't a fire and brimstone type speech. He wasn't breaking bats. He wasn't throwing gloves or balls around. He wasn't even screaming. He was very direct. He was very even-tempered. But he told the guys, it's time to prove ourselves. We didn't play well in our first game Friday against Clemson. Now we've got to step it up. It's how we got here through the regional, through the Super Regional, and all the way to the College World Series. The guys, they faced the elimination already three times this year. They don't feel a lot of pressure. And asked a couple of players, do you respond well to that speech? They said, we all know exactly what he means. Now it's time for us to prove it. Dave, you're absolutely right. And this is probably the most pressure-packed situation uh, any of these kids have ever faced. Although Louisiana Lafayette, uh, for heaven's sakes, went to South Carolina to face the team in the country and had to win two in a row. But they're right back on the pressure cooker now. Well, they really are. And, and like you said, they have that experience that they can take from that South Carolina series. And a lot of, a lot of them have brought that with them. The San Jose State, on the other hand, really embarrassed with their performance. They felt like they did not play themselves like they possibly could. Stephen Feehan out of Metairie, Louisiana. And he smokes the first pitch down the left field line. Douglas especially over the top. Feehan jumped on the first pitch and ripped it. And he sure did, right? Going up there being aggressive. In an elimination game, that's what you have to do. Put the pressure on the other team. We saw San Jose State lead off with the base hit. And right here, coming right back at him, gets a fastball inside half and turns on it. Just wasn't able to keep it fair. See a go foul umpire right there. Long strike. When hitters guess right, it's a good thing. You assume the pitcher's trying to get that first one over to get the nerves going. So you guess fastball, maybe guess a location and jump it. Considered one of their more disciplined kids. He's been a leader on a team. Walked on this is four, four years ago as an all-star in a high school game. So they look to him for their leadership. The coach is going to give a guy like that a green light to go up there for the first pitch and go at him. The only player in school history to play in four NCAA regionals. And because of that experience. 
Tennis apparently on the bases when he gets on. He's got that green light to run. Tony Robles show. 13 years has reached the big show. 460. <laughs> Take a look at that defense. Here. Well, San Jose State has got to play solid D, and it all starts with the man in the middle, the shortstop, Gary Patchett. Great hands, super instincts. Hasn't hit a whole lot. He's hit more than they thought he might, but I tell you, he's exciting shortstop. Gill, first pitch in into center field, and the diving try and the catch by Brucker. Well, they're not waiting around tonight. Right? No, sir. Now, Game, the first game today, the Stanford game, had the wind blowing everywhere and it knocked a lot of balls down. You see the jump by the center field, the ball gets knocked down and he stays with it to come up with the play. See the concentration right there, Mike. Ryan Rucker staying with that ball and he's fighting the sun at that. Difficult play. The book on him, great range and a great jump. Another first pitch swing, Nathan Nelson. And that's going to be a foul ball. The home plate umpire's call, and David Wiley made it until it gets across the bag. <laughs> Nelson stands in at 382 on the season, one for four in the College World Series. Chapel Hill, Texas is his hometown, and he is a senior. Shots this one outside the first baseline. He's in the 0-2 the against Bill Baker. Well, Bill Baker, if any indication that first inning jitters is getting to him, it's not. He's been throwing strikes, and that's what you want to do. Force him to hit the ball, force the action. Baker would also like some run support when they hasn't had one this year. And that's foul tip at the feet of the catcher, Adam Short. Games prior to tonight scored a total of 64 runs. It's 3.76 runs per game. The opponents have scored 80 runs, so you're not going to win with the with that kind of a ratio. But that's not a whole lot of runs. Of no, only getting 3.76 is, uh, is not good. And when the other members of the Nothing, nothing as we go to the top of the second inning. Elimination Sunday night for San Jose State and Louisiana Lafayette. And San Jose State, here's a little background on this school. They're out of the WAC conference. They're one of the prettiest cities anywhere. Rather than San Jose Uh, Sam Ferraro has them fired up for 
this one. And Junior Ruiz stands in to start the second. The leading hitter on the block, up 358. Out of Union City, California, played his high school ball at James Logan High School. He's a sophomore. He struggled in the postseason. He's been going after, they say, too many first pitches. Yeah. Wanted to take a couple. You're absolutely right, Mike. And if he settles down and gets his pitch, he's the guy that's got to make this team go. Impressive hitter all year. Line drive, got to get it. And has some speed. Been in a slump, but still hitting 358. Louise was the player of the year in the WAC this season. Freshman of the year a year ago. Been DHing about the last month because of injuries, hasn't played in the field.
Nothing, second inning. That's the view we have from the uh, press box here at Beautiful Rose Glass Stadium. The magnificent facility up here for uh, the press and, and, and the finest press box that I have ever been in outside of a couple of NFL stadiums. And that is uh, Jim Wright, the NCAA Director of Statistics, who keeps us up there. <laughs> also the media coordinator for the NCAA in uh, College World Series action. Nice to see the familiar faces year after year when we come out here. People you used to work with and you can trust the information that they're uh, passing along to you. Uh, of course, Rosenblatt has been the home of this event for the last 51 years and hopefully for the next 50 years. Danny Maziani stands in. He's a senior from Houston. Maziotti, one of the ten finalists for the Johnny Bench Award, a six-round draft pick this year. Calls his own game, Mike. That might be the most impressive statistic of it all. The fact that he calls his game. College baseball, most of the signs, the pickoffs, the pitch, everything comes from the dugout, from the head coach and, or the pitching coach. And this young man, he runs the whole game for, for their team. He wants these kids to learn because he knows a lot of them are going to have a future. You know, going into the minor leagues as a prospect, uh, the quicker you have to be it. How is this supposed to be about that? Right. I didn't follow that uh, dictum myself. Two and two to Maziati. Interesting is he has the ability to switch hit. He does not switch hit now, but in pro ball, he's planning on being a switch hit. Is it never too late to learn that skill? No, I don't think so. I think you have to be able to.
great camera work. The fans are getting out of the way. They're letting him play. It just got by him. Right past his blow. Will Hawkins stands in. Great effort out there. Mike, you talked about it the other day. At least he got to the wall. Yes, he did. He had a chance to lose. Oh! Base. Now, Jarvis has been very hot. 
did a nice job of hitting Stan right up the middle to pick up the run. Rucker is always Team seems to have one. This is the uh, team character who keeps everybody loose. Gotta have those guys that take it nice and easy. Dave Bryan back at the concourse outside Rosenblatt Stadium. It is time for a taste test. So we have picked randomly five different baseball fans here at the College World Series. We'll start with you. You've got a broad. Take a bite. Give us a rating. This is Wendy, by the way. What do you think? Gives it an eight. Not bad. Let's move on. Uh, Eric. Got a falling apart here. Got a hero, folks. Pull up that rating for us. Not bad. All right, here's little Alec, who's five years old. Give your pizza bite there, Pop. He says a perfect 10. Pretty good. Good job. We'll finish the rest of the test when we uh, get back some baseball. Mike Carroll, go ahead. All right, Dave, thanks very much. You know what's going to happen to that food when they leave the taste test? Dave's going to eat it. Tough to top last night, but wouldn't it? Rob Douglas stands in against the season Hayward, California. Hitting 220, but 273 in the postseason. Oh. A disappointing year for this young man. You see the glasses that he's wearing. Had to make multiple trips to the eye doctor to correct the problem. They finally let him play. Uh, in the Houston series in the Super Regional, when he did very well, it had to be terribly frustrating for him. The only four year player on the ball club.
struggling at the plate with seeing is because you don't get your head turned and use both eyes on the ball. Sometimes you use one eye. Look at how he's got his head turned to the pitcher now. He's using both eyes on the ball, and this allows him to see it better and see the follow through and extension, a great swing, but he's got the right head position. Look at how his head's already turned to the pitcher. Now he can track the baseball with two eyes instead of one. And that's one of the reasons he's been hot as of late. He's been able to square his head up a little bit more than looking out of one eye. Saw that one pretty well. Adam Short should be a sophomore catcher from San Jose. Long run product is in. And the tying run from the Spartans is at the plate. Shorshire with a couple of home runs this year and hitting 232 on the season. Mike, this is a situation here where they have to get the man over. You don't panic and come out of your game plan. You continue to, to manufacture. That's the type of game they play. They have to get the man over and maybe pick up a run in this inning. All right, all right. Is the number eight hitter. Here's where the battle of strategy comes in. He wants something outside. He can get to the right side. And Doman wants to give him inside stuff so he can. So this is where you go to the bunt. You drop a bunt. You got the third base in the back. You push on the inside. You go ahead and drop the bunt. Multiple ways to get the ball. Three and one now. The short shot for breaking ball hangs
where he's going to try to place this bunt. I don't know why the runner on first base is over there. Do you have any idea what he might be trying I do not. to do over there? I think a lot of it is like meetings. The more people you can get in the meeting that don't matter, well, the may better. Maybe the rule is you can't bring a guy in from second, so he runs down. The guy that was in second came over to first base. Maybe he told him what they were thinking. Now he goes back. So that's how you get around the rules and really relax. San Jose State is known as a track school, you know, so they run the relay right there. Everybody <laughs> the <laughs> out here in the third as we go back to the top of the order to Brucker, who single. Set up outside, look at Maziati. He's, it's not even going to be a strike, but when you got two strikes, you got to expand the strike zone. They took advantage of that. Brian Stream passed into a fielder's choice his first time up. Stream only at 5 3. But again, he's only drawn 28 walks on. Well, he's a free swinger. In this situation, you, know, you don't mind him going up there and getting a fastball and hacking at it. But uh, other situations that he's been in, he could take more pitches, a 2-0 pitch, a 3-1 pitch, and try to work the count a little bit more. Right here, I want him to be aggressive and try to drive a run in for him. Doesn't have a home run this year, but in college, he hit him from both sides of the field. This is switching. It's a fastball up and in. He's a tough target to throw to. He stands right on top of the plate. Like you said, he stands 5-3. So he's got a great advantage to force the pitcher to have to throw him a strike. Go roll! Go roll! Right in there on another slider, one and two. It's a nice pitch from Dunn. Well, oh, he's got a real nice slider. He throws it a lot. One out, runners at first and second. San Jose State down by one. This will be the 25th catch of the inning. 
Masiati back there. Rock on the ball. And Mike, they said he's a bulldog and he won't give in. And, and he hasn't given in to throw the fastball to a fastball hitter. He has come back. We saw the last hitter, Brucker, he threw him sliders. And right here he's throwing spin sliders. He's coming with his best pick and not backing down. Green is such a tough, tough player as you see going looking for the scene. It's that one foul. As a freshman, Scream had a serious eye injury and has a metal plate all the way around his right eye as the orbital bone was crushed. And they really just had to go from side to side to do the surgery and put the metal plate in there. Looking in, they bust him with the fastball on the outside half. That's just a great piece of pitching, Mike. And nice job of calling the game by Masiati. There you can see this. What you were talking about, Mike. Come on, Mac, here you go. Big Mac, come on, baby. Hey, something, Big Mac, here you go. It's to me how to think, think about taking out the chips. My baby's been hit now. Mackey now with two on, but two out. Second leading hitter on the ball club as a 12 game hit streak. Skies this They, they, they know something we don't know, and that's absolutely God. That wouldn't be the first time, would it? Yeah, you got that right. It was a pretty horrific story. A couple years ago in fall ball practice, he was in a batting cage, a very narrow area, and he was playing catcher. And he played some catcher in high school. One of his teammates was doing a blind pitching drill where you just kind of throw at somebody hoping to hit a target. Well, it ricocheted off the post and went right off of his right eye. As it turned out, a couple of bones right around that orbital bone area were cracked. He had to go right to emergency surgery. Now, guys, this is pretty gruesome, but from ear to ear, they had to slit his scalp, and we saw that horrific scar as well. They did repair the eye, though, and the best part of the story is a couple days later, he went into his coach's office and said, guys, I'm ready to practice again. He did. He was on the practice field within a month after that terrible accident. Well, my hat's off to him, Dave. That takes, uh, takes a lot of guts to go through that and hop on back and say, let's go. I want to do it again. You gotta love players like that. You can't get enough of those guys. Heidel, the shortstop. 
a junior from Gonzalez, Louisiana, 11th round draft choice last week of Arizona. Very good shortstop. This one back out of play. 283 on the season. Had a home run in the opening game of the College World Series. Only his seventh of the season. And a couple of runs batted in, so he's already off to an excellent start with a bat in his hand. He's another one of those kids that developed himself into an 11th round draft. In the dirt. Came to, came to school on, on the preferred walk on program. And coach said, hey, I don't have a spot for you. He stayed, he worked and worked. And next thing you know, he's a, he's a drafted ball player and he's putting up some pretty good numbers. One of their hardest workers and engineering major. Line drive, face hit, just over the glove of the leaping Gary Patrick. Behind him having himself a fine College World Series so far. And he starts with all from the bottom of the third here. First club. Well, nice piece of hitting. He got a fastball out there. And this is the fastball was thrown by him. So he was able to speed up his bat, catch up to it, and drives the ball into the gap. Two for five now in the College World Series. A home run and a single. And back to the top of the order for Feehan. It was a strikeout for this first trip. Joey Baker got a nice fluid motion to the plate, doesn't he? Nice and easy fastball. We have seen some good pitching here in the College World Series. Baker working his 120th inning. This season, he has been a worker for this club. Has seven complete games. Buck took a strike. Well, that was a tough pitch to bunt. It's a good thing he took it because the fastball bearing in back on his hands, and there was nothing to do but pop that pitch up because a lot of times you don't get the bat head out on that one. Feehan, as you see, is fan four of his five times so far. Ivan has stolen nine bases this season and 14 tries. The man behind the plate, Shorsher, you don't really want to run on this guy. 53 of 82. He's So it's hard to see the batter and the ball. He's still in the still box. In the box. See the back foot. That's what I said. He waited and set himself to push this ball. And by waiting, that's what allowed him to still be in the box when that ball hit him. And his body was obviously leaning into fair territory, but if you're in the box, you're in the box. And it goes as a foul ball, he's on two. Of course, that's almost essential for a head coach or manager to come out and at least question that. Absolutely, especially in the elimination game. You've got to go out there and be more interested you can. 0 oh, 2 to Feehan. We told you Shorsha would throw anywhere at any time, and he threw a strike to first. Mike, I know you're a big football fan, so you just get us there and you just say, give me eight. Inches of daylight. This young man says, "Just give me one open seam, and I got you." You see the first, the runner Heidel stepping off, taking his courtesy, his shuffle steps. You see, he got too far off, and boom, he got him. 
Now that sends two messages as they get the check swing on the out of the pair. Meehan goes down swinging. But Mike, by him throwing the ball like he does, it sends two messages to base runners. I can't get that far off and be aggressive getting the lead. And so it takes away your skill into second base because you've got to stay closer to the base when the ball goes past the plate. Sure, sure, a strong, accurate arm. That was a pretty play, and quickly two out for the Raging Cajuns. Plays like that, but keep your club in the ball game, and especially in a two-to-one game like this. Gill, wind to center, his first time up. Baker's had, uh, when he has missed with that slider, he has missed high and very high. Good thing it's out of the zone because right. if he misses with it as a strike, it might get hammered. Fastball. Sky. And thanks to a great throw by Adam Schorcher, a single is wasted for Louisiana Lafayette. And no runs. It's still a two run ball game. Two to one, Louisiana Lafayette over San Jose State as we go to the top of the fourth in our first elimination game here in the College World Series. Mike Patrick, Harold Rose, Dave Ryan, and I would guess better than uh, 18, 19,000 people here right now in Rosenblatt Stadium. We are again ahead of last year's record setting pace. Well, watch a little baseball and eat everything in sight, huh? Stanford people basking in the glory of a win. Absolutely. Justin Wayne outstanding today in their victory. Well, he was impressive, wasn't he? He was. Junior Ruiz stands in the first game and takes a fast ball in there for a called strike. Ruiz, as we said, has struggled a little bit in the postseason. And skies this one to shallow right. Oh, great communication right there. Anytime there's a ball in between the infielders like that, we've seen this a couple times, but as an infielder, you go back, you don't say anything. Until you get under the ball and have it under control, you just wave your arms. The outfielder's job is to talk. You're to be quiet. You throw your arms up and let it know he never did, so that's why the outfielder kept coming. the way of his arm. That's to let the outfielder know, hey, I got it under control. I'm under the ball. There's no, because if you say, I got it, that may sound like, or you say you take it, or anything like that, you can't talk. You got to be dead silent. Let's go back, see him waving. They're both talking, the, the right fielder's talking. But if you're talking also, you can't hear him. 
he can see you, and that's the communication there. A little look like Gill at the last minute was saying, mine, mine. When he gets it and he's telling you, go ahead, then you can say that. Tony Tognetti with the pop up. This is Fagan. He rolled out the first in the first inning. Strike call. One more. Bowman had a little trouble in the third, but that's about it. An unearned run after the third. Good ball game here. Louisiana Lafayette over San Jose State 2 to 1. And if uh, you had not heard the name of the school, there's a good reason. They're out of Sun Belt Conference in Lafayette, Louisiana. 17,000 are officially enrolled. But until September 10th, you always heard the name Southwest Louisiana. Uh, this is the baseball program that has gotten them here under Tony Robichaux for the first time ever to the College World Series. And they made news in the regional when they beat number one South Carolina. Twice. High and deep to left. The hooking foul. Nathan Nelson got out ahead of one. And the senior from Chapel Hill, Texas, who has six home runs this year, nearly had his seven. Well, second time around, he knew what he was looking for. He got a slider first pitch and tried to drive it out of the ballpark. Wasn't able to keep it fair. And Joey Baker will make a mental note of that. Fastball oh, right down the pipe. Said they're, sitting, they're sitting off speed. Okay, here comes the fastball. <laughs> Getter for ball one. Yeah, he's busted you in 0 2. That's the old style of pitching. 0 2, here comes the ball right at you. Get out of the way, and I'm coming back to the slider right here. 1 2 to get you. See if it's outside corner at the knees. Close enough, struck him out. There it is.
Danny Maziotti, his first time up. He gave the club a lead in the second inning. And it hit his seventh home run of the season for the Raging Cajun. Hanging slider. Douglas looked for all the world like he had a shot. This may have just mistimed his lead and missed it. And Maziotti with the home run. Last time Maziotti was up, Mike, we were talking about him becoming a switch hitter. And I really didn't start switch hitting until I was about 19 years old, so it's not too late if you have the hand eye coordination to do it. But I didn't hit balls like that off the right hand either, right hand. Oh, he's got how many home runs? Is that seven? Seven, seven home runs this season. As you see, he was picked in the uh, amateur draft a week ago, sixth round by the Devil Rays. Excellent defensive catch. Well, the batteries have been very impressive. We've seen some good catchers and we've seen right. some good pitching. I, I think that and some shortstops are the strongest areas that we've seen in college baseball here in the College World Series. Year after year, uh, we see shortstops and catchers. Boy, we have some beauties. Mm -hmm. And when this was a bigger ballpark, the center fielders could really show off their skills too. It used to be. Uh, 20 feet deeper in center field, and they really had to get on their horse sometimes. You'd see some guys who could play some center field. Good ones have been here. Odeby McDowell, Deion Sanders. They have a couple back in there, though. So we're back to Maziani, another slider drill straight to center. He's supposed to hit the ball to center when we're talking about the center field. Absolutely. Field. The way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be a tougher play, though. Yeah. But Rucker could have made it. He's already made a couple. Tune into ESPN weeknights at 10 and at midnight. Great show. I mean, we do some great preparation. We come up with uh, different themes. Our meetings, that's really, they should shoot our meetings. The meetings are unbelievable. <laughs> you get to wear the wig at all? Nah. We tired of that. <laughs> We're talking a lot about your hair this week, huh? Yeah, I guess so. But Peter, Peter is so unbelievable. The guy is like a uh, walking dictionary. He knows so much stuff. It's all mental notes. He doesn't even take notes. That's great. Incredible. Good job foul outside the third. Hawkins had a double his last time. That was his first base hit in the College World Series. Louisiana Lafayette trying to stay alive in this tournament. Up by a run on the half of the fourth. Baseball at the knees, two and two. Pitching has been impressive so far in this game. Dolan and Baker have looked good. Struck him out. The fifth strike out of the game. Somewhere down the road, you might say, hey, I remember when. Remember when Brad Wilkerson threw his own birthday bash here at Rosenblatt back in 96? He hit it this home run. And then came on to get the save and a win against Florida State. Then in the 98 series, with the chance to beat Mississippi State in the ninth, his drive for a game-winning home run went inches foul. Now he plays double A ball in central Pennsylvania for the Harrisburg Senators in the Expos organization. Hitting 328, five home runs, 41 driven in. Doing pretty well. well. He's playing great. My brother Don is actually the farm director for the Montreal Expos. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, talking about these guys. Uh, I promise for Brad there. Well, we have seen so many guys come through here and uh, a couple of years later, they're in the majors and not just in the show they're making noise at the show mm -hmm. a lot of it 
Rob Douglas who had a great at bat his first time up. Double to right. And is two for five in the College World Series. He's one of their hottest postseason hitters. Hitting out of the seventh hole. And leading off the fifth. Fastball just high. Three and oh. You're talking about how quick guys get to the big leagues after this pitch. I'll, uh, Fastball on their first strike. You remember Seth Etherton from USC. Sure. You know, championship team that year. He, I saw him pitch his first game in the big leagues. I called that uh, a couple weeks ago in Cleveland. So they get there quick. That was 98. He's there in two years. Fastball smoked to right center field and it's in for the base hit. Douglas is two for two and he's hitting on the nose twice in a row. Somebody get the name of that ophthalmologist and <laughs> fit everybody. He got that right. The specs are working. He gets a fastball. He's also been in good hitters counts and that's what you have to do. Good follow through nice swing. But when you get into good counts and you're seeing the ball like he is you're going to come up with some base hits. Back to the bottom of the order, the eight, number eight man is Shorsher. Now they got him picked off. Douglas caught in the rundown. Did he make it back? No, he did. Very close to making it back. As they didn't make the throw and went for the tag. But what made this play is I don't know if they're supposed to be a hit and run or something. The ball was thrown right at the hitter, and so Douglas got held, hung out. Now what, but watch Mazziotti. He hops up, starts to throw, and instead of committing a throw to first base, he forced the runner to, to dictate which direction he wanted to go in. And then Heidel coming up with the tag. Well, Heidel took a chance, and this one is hit hard by Schorcher to get center field, but Thien is there, and there's the second. Well, you're right, Mike. He got him running hard. He could have just went ahead and gave the ball up. Gary Patchett, the number nine man, now stands in. So each team has had a runner picked off. And again, in a game like this that is uh, sailing along in the fifth of one run game, those are critical plays. They're not getting that many base runners, and you have to take advantage. In on the hands, pops him up on the right side. And good, that was able to make the catch. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Louisiana Lafayette still up by a run. Huh? God love you. You want me to do this for him? Raging Cajuns with a one run lead over the Spartans as we go to the bottom of the fifth of the College World Series. Earlier today, Stan Clarkson game five. 14 game winner Justin Wayne got to a jam with two on and nobody out but retired the next three batters. Joe Borchard led the offense. He went three for four, three run score and two for nine. And Wayne picks up a score record. When you're a pitcher and you get a record anything at Stanford, you're pretty good. <laughs> yes, you are. We're going over that today. They have seven or eight guys that have gone through and pitched in the major league. Fifteen and three. Both teams had 12 hits, but Clemson failed miserably with runners in scoring position. Three out of 18. 
They had a lot of base runners and just did not convert. Well, we were talking about following guys through the College World Series. Justin Wayne, remember that name because he will be in the big leagues very soon. Yeah, it won't take him long, I don't think. Home half of the fifth for the Raging Cajuns up two to one. They'd like to add to it, and there's a hit pass. Tommy Clark took one for the ball club. Well, he took it and didn't have the elbow pad on. You know, a lot of the kids today, Mike, they're going with elbow pads and everything else. Watch this. He's got a little wrap, but he just stays right there, takes the blow, actually right in the side here. You know, me personally, I'm putting these on. They let me wear an elbow pad. I'm going up there. If they want to hit me, then I'm going to stand there and let them <laughs> hit this puppy. You know, that's what they're doing. Go up in a suit of armor. I've got nothing in my locker room here. You pull this out. But, you know, a lot of big league hitters started wearing these pads. And really, as a hitter, you can see Jarvis take a strike right there. They get on top of the plate, and it, and it forces the pitcher. I mean, look at all this area. It protects. You stand there. You're not afraid of a ball being inside right. anymore. A lot of guys don't know how to roll out of the way of a pitch anymore because they stand there with the pad. Jarvis Larry, who had a sacrifice fly his first time up. Looks to Bart, takes one in the dirt. Good block by Shorsher. Well, see right there, Mike, because Shorsher picked off that runner last inning. They weren't even thinking about advancing on a bobbled ball. The runner was standing on top of first base. And Clark is one of their best base dealers, 13 out of 20. You see the numbers on Jarvis Larry has his average up to 277. There's a couple of RBIs here at the top of the series. Runner Jarvis Pollock just right away. Mackey comes on, makes the catch, and fires the first down in time. So Larry hit it pretty well, but hit it right at Brandon Mackey. That'll bring up the number eight man, Poche. Well, he tried to execute the hit and run right there, Mike. He got a pitch that was outside and just wasn't able to put it on the ground, but he did hit it hard. Some kind of change going on down here. Mike Atwood's getting ready to pinch hit here. Atwood has been used as a uh, DH most of the year. He and Larry. Atwood, a junior out of Columbus, Mississippi, and went to North Florida Junior College. But a disappointment this year because in J.C. Ball he hit 40 home runs in two years. Well, it looks like from watching him take batting practice, he's got a little inside-out swing. And for most power hitters, you want to try to get that bat head out and pull the ball. And that happens when you don't play much. You kind of lose your stroke. And like you said, Mike, he's got power to all fields and. Really, it's making an adjustment. Coach really feels like next year he will have a big year. They're expecting him to bounce back because he will get the at bats. Well, he's a big kid, 6'2, 215. He can generate some bats. Chop this one foul with the runner going. Clark with good speed down at first. 13 steals on the year.
where Baker's looking for a ground ball right here. If he can get one, maybe get a double play ball, get him out of the end. One and two just missed with a fastball. Mm. Wanted that one in the worst way. Heidel, the number nine man, is the on deck hitter. Now 2-2, two, two, the pitch hitter Scott Atwood, and he laces it to left. Douglas spun around, made the catch. Good play by Rob Douglas. Well, you called it dead on the nose, Mike. He spun around and made the catch. He's looking at himself like, goodness gracious. That's one of those little bubbles coming out of the, the head and you're thinking. But he gets twisted around. Unfortunately, he was left-handed. He was able to make the reaction to catch it and get back in. But this ball is on the line. It just hooked and dived. The ball is doing a lot of different things tonight. Not really carrying. We've seen a couple of balls hit right on the nose that haven't really gone very far. That one may go away. Heidel smokes at the center. Brucker goes for the spectacular catch and had a glance off his ball. A run scoring double for Heidel. Wow. What a sensational effort, though. And that is the play you've got to lay out on. Two outs. Runner on first. You know he's going to score on a ball in the gap. And look at this effort, Mike. Talk about all out. And just nip off the glove. Man, he went a long way to even make that play playable. Great effort. One of the better efforts I've seen here in the College World Series. Just a tremendous try for Ryan Brucker. When that ball left the bat, I thought he had no chance of getting there. Me too. He chased it down. He always gets a Nobody. great jump on the ball, it seems. Back to the top of the order for Feehan. And now it is three and three to one for the Raging Cajuns. Feehan has had his problems no with strikeouts. Move, Five out of six Shoot plate it. appearances. He has failed. Right there, second base. Joey Baker has to be thinking again. It's another one of these games. They've gotten one run for me. Hasn't gotten run support most of the season. Down three to one Good. here in the fifth and trying to limit Good. the damage. Two outs are on the side. Fair ball just inside the line. Home another breaking ball up and in. That's going to be a double for Feehan. Makes the wide turn at second and now retreats. RBI double for Stephen Feehan, his first base hit of the College World Series. Well, Mike, if you remember last that back for Feehan, when he was up there, he went chasing after that slider. First pitch, hammered it foul hard, and then they got him out. Here's another hanging breaking ball. He's looking for it the whole way, and smokes it down the third base line. Al Davis, the third base umpire, right on top of that call. Rounds around, but it is a double, no doubt, and we're going to have a pitching change. Baker could not get them out of the inning. And we will see Tim Adenolfi. So Baker gives up four runs through four and two thirds. Touched up for a couple here in the fifth. Well, Mike, he pitched pretty good. I mean, he got hit hard late, but he had good stuff located. I'm telling you, they come up with the big catch right there, getting some runs, a chance to get some breathing. We've seen. How much fun the Raging Cajun fans have been having here so far in Omaha with the players having just as much fun. They are part of your Louisiana Lafayette All Access. It feels pads. great, you know, we just left our own black. We had a good practice and we're going home, get something to eat, and get ready for the open ceremonies. Nobody thinks we can do it, so. Shoot ya!
we're gonna get some jambalaya sometime. We're getting pretty hungry. Beaver some rice, stew, some beaver stew, and some oatmeal, uh, squirrel lip gumbo. I don't know how you turn that on. Right. This is the Cajun hitting genie. And what I do before each game, you know, I stand in my locker, kind of like this is my locker right here. I stand in it, and I just kind of get a little bit of this on it right here, just a little bit, like this. Hey, we need about thirteen dollars so we can dye his hair of silver. Oh, so we all gotta put up. Then I, I got one dollar. Right oh, you here. know, I right. probably got one. Had a boy, look at it. Jarvis, money tree. What you got to say, Cisco? You want me to do your eyebrow? Y'all ready? Can snow. We got some bleach hair going on in here. That's that's a body right there, baby. Look at that. Be ashamed to look stupid and not win, huh? <laughs> Yes, it is. If you're going to look stupid, you might as well win. Uh, oh, that's great. Steve Turnberger, who has uh, been producing those, just had a great time with him, did a wonderful job. And those, you know, those Louisiana kids, they know people tend to make fun of them, and they play that up in a big way, you know, with the false teeth and all that other stuff. It's a fun, fun group of kids to be around every year at LSU or Louisiana Lafayette, whatever. Tim Adenolfi comes in, left-hand pitcher, a senior. He's all a junior, a senior academically, a junior eligible. Out of right San there, Jose. good, no inside move. Second base. And his number was seven saves. The time as a school worker. He's going to feature an overhand fastball like you saw right there, and a great curveball with that, and a changeup. And he's usually around the plate. You see a high strikeout number, 80 strikeouts. If you're a Yankee Yikes. fan and watching uh, this game, here's a future player, Ryan Gill, 17th round draft choice. Playing second base tonight, but they drafted him uh, with his pitching in mind. He had an arm Yikes. injury. Right there, hold your ground. Required surgery. They think Yikes. he has quite a future. Oh, Breaking oh, ball as the runner goes. He got an excellent jump right there, too. But with two outs, your infielders want to play back and knock down any ball hit in the infield. So let him go to third. He's going to score on a base hit anyway. Great jump by Feehan. Feehan has stolen 14 bases this year. And Gill has a two on the swing. The on the Line swing. The no tag here. And thrown to right. Second base. Good. Nobody. A good look at Rod Dato. Right there. Southern Cal with big win the other day. Yeah, Rod Dato's gonna see them all. Second you. base! Oh. Right there! Brian Stream got the worst of that as Feehan went back in standing up. Well, you know Stream's gonna get back up, it's not gonna bother him. But they're getting, he's getting ready to take off and run. They use a spin play. You see the, the timing play comes back and the big guy took out the little guy on this play. Basically, if the pitcher had delivered the ball a little earlier, they yep. might have had it. Now, the voice you hear telling him to get back is Wade Simino, the third base coach. Back, back. Telling him again. And so he doesn't have to be looking at the second baseman or the shortstop. Simino is telling him what to do. Here's the thing about that, Mike. You got two outs, right you got there, two strikes on the hitter. Get right the there, out. nobody. He can run all day because he's going to score a base hit anyway. So you don't want to take yourself out of position, particularly when a guy has two strikes, for him to slap a ball or reach out and hit a ball through the right side. That's right. On a ball you could have dove and knocked down or made a play on. So if he wants to dance around and run all day, you go ahead and do that. Right there, you're good. Let him go with two outs. Well, sure, sure, the catcher is drooling because he throws out most guys who run. See, the worst right thing you there. can do right here is put a pickoff Second on base. the catcher, and then everybody's Nobody. out. Nobody. Nobody. He's going to slap him. He's going right at that hole that we were talking about. The third out of the inning, but two runs scored. The bottom of the order.
Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha inside a lop hand dugout. These are the dog tags that Coach Tony Robichaux gave out to his team before the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. He wanted to tell his guys that, look, this is going to be a war, and we've got to be completely prepared to battle our way all the way through the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. It didn't quite work. They didn't win, but they made it to the regional, to the Super Regional, and upset the number one ranked South Carolina Gamecock at Sarge Fry Field in Columbia. Not bad against Ray Tanner's team. That's winning a pretty big war, but guys, a battle's going on right now. We'll see if the dog tags pay off. They've all got them on, just about everybody under their jerseys, game jerseys. Anything that works, anything that brings your team together, is good. Yes, indeed. Brucker will lead it off in the top of the sixth inning. Brucker nearly made the circus catch in center field. Mm -hmm. Tremendous effort, stretched out, dove to the morning track, and then just caught the edge of his glove. Center field for me any day. Straight away to center for Fino. Young block. Well, Mike, a big difference for Lafayette. In game one, they had 10 walks against Stanford. Tonight, Dominic has one walk. And that's, that's what we were talking about at the top being able to relax and play. They played a much better game. And so has San Jose State. Both clubs have been very crisp. He came in walking with 32 and 124 and two thirds innings, and his strikeout to walk ratio around 4 of 1 this year. So he has done a great job with it. Mm. Stream 0 for 2, and now 2 for 6 in the College World Series. He hits it to straightaway center. He has for a 3 to 5. Two in a row to straightaway center field. Well, he's getting a lot of fly ball outs, and that tells me he's still got a little zip on his fastball because the hitters have not been able to get that good extension. And the other thing is, every time he's had a threat, he's been able to bear down and make the pitches that they need to make to get out of a jam. They only got to him for one run, and that came in the third. A leadoff double and an error contributed mightily to that run. Still getting up there around 90 miles an hour to Brandon Mackey. Hit into a double play and popped out. Hit toward the second baseman. Ryan Gilly is a play for him. Fifth, one, two, three, and the sixth. A sixth, fifth, fifth. Sixth inning, College World Series. Louisiana Lafayette trying to eliminate San Jose State. Raging Cajuns took a 2 0 lead. San Jose State came back to cut it to 2 1, but then the two runs to the bottom of the fifth. Louisiana Lafayette has regained a three run advantage in this game, and they'll come to bat with a 3 4 5 minute New York trying to add to it. Nathan Nelson will lead it off, fly to center, and struck out in his two trips. Had an off 
Murphy is on in his second inning of relief to face the heart of the order. at this morning's meeting that uh, Adenolfi would be the relief pitcher of choice. Early, middle, or late, it was going to be Adenolfi. Who was coming in. Foul well, back up play again. One and two to Nathan Nelson. And it's Adenolfi's job right now to hold it at four. He stays around the plate, Mike, and that's what they like about him. Full assortment. He threw the fastball a couple times and change up, and right there, that was a slider. This is a good look at the slider right at the third baseman. The home plate umpire made this call, and so did the third base umpire. He looked the second, but the umpire behind him, no, he doesn't make that call. The, the home plate umpire did, and I don't know where he's looking, so he just threw the ball across the diamond. Threw it anyway yeah. to make sure. Remember the other night, Al Davis was at first base, and then right. he made a call. He's, this time, I'm not making that call. <laughs> <laughs> Masiati, who a homered earlier, lost this one to center field. Brooklyn tracks it down. Two gone. Doubled his first time up and then struck out. Guy who gets his hacks and is a streak hitter, hitting 284 on the season. One for six here at Omaha in two games. Well, I love his philosophy, Mike. He says that we're out of fastball. His theory is three K's and a double, and he won't get cheated. He was asked, how do you hit a fastball? He said, swing hard. Well, how do you hit a curveball? Swing harder. I believe he stole that one from Hank Aaron. Yes, he did. Uh, nice change -up. That's how you get a guy who likes to swing hard out. A fastball is a fun change. -up. Yeah, Hank Aaron was asked that question. And he kind of stole that. Well, that was really Hank's philosophy. He lived up to it. Yeah, Hank could hit anything. Hit them all hard. his name to anybody and everybody responds what a good guy. Ken Caminetti, Anthony Telford who's now with Montreal Expos, Caminetti with the Astros and Mark Langston who is now retired. All three went to school there. Trying to get them involved in the program. Well, another mark hit by a pitch the last time up and that is off the short mask. Mark Langston had a function with San Jose State as you see the fall foul back right into the mask. And what's the home plate up He's going to take the time to go ahead and give him a blow. And that's the working relationship that an umpire and a catcher has. They understand what it's like to be hit in a mask. He took his time, walked out there, gave the pitcher a ball, came back, and still taking the time that he might need to let him shake off that blow. I'm down and out, Mike. I'm done. <laughs> done for the count. One and one to Tommy Clark, two out of runner aboard. Snap for the first. Yeah, there just doesn't seem to be any reason to take that kind of abuse. You know? Runner goes, they've got him picked. Will 
they did everything right to execute the rundown. Watch the pickoff. He knows he's got him. The first baseman kills himself. Now watch the shortstop running hard. He's got him. Let's go wide. Just couldn't hang on to the ball. And you can see he did not have that grip at all, and he's doing everything he possibly do to hold on to that. And another good call by Joe Burleson, the first base umpire, right on top of it, and waited to see. You know, so often with the first baseman's glove, it is so much bigger than any other glove. He had that right here, and he couldn't really feel it. Instead of catching it in the web and being able to tag him like this, he got that ball right here, yeah. kicked out, and he lost it. Tough play. Got everything up here. Oh man, I love this. They, they got a little closet for me. I can do all kinds of things with that. Soft shell crabs in here last yes. night. I think it came from that slot over there. Chop to short. Patch it. We'll go to short with the second for the field. White when it shows up on the hill. College World Series will continue tomorrow with second round games from bracket two. USC will face LSU in the afternoon on ESPN. Then at 7 o'clock Eastern, it's Florida State taking on Texas here on ESPN2. It's an elimination contest. Earlier today in bracket one, Stanford defeated Clemson. The winner of this game will take on the Tigers Tuesday afternoon on ESPN. This is a tremendous field. You know, traditionally rich teams that from all over LSU, USC, you know they're going to be here. They're back in power. And the program is as strong as they've ever been, especially with the great parity in college baseball. For those schools that still dominate, they are getting the cream of the crop because they lose them in the draft. Don't move the numbers with a high fastball. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, you think about this LSU's program. They had eight players drafted off their current team. 22 kids that they have already tried to sign have been drafted in the draft. Another fastball line. The problem is they agree to come to school and they have to wait months to find out if they're actually going to be there. And they're still competitive. 2 and 0. 3 and 0. Goldman has walked only one, struck out two, and allowed about three hits through six innings of work. about the experience Louisiana Lafayette San Jose State their first trip ever Clemson on its ninth LSU now in the 11th four titles all in the 90s Stanford 12 times Florida State now 18 and looking for that first title USC that legendary program of 20 and 12 championships here in Omaha. Right 
You see Dahman right there come back and go with the slider. Sometimes when a pitcher gets out of sync, you come back with an off speed pitch and puts the arm slot right back where it needs to be. Dagnetti looking for his first hit of the night, fouls him back out to the side behind home plate. Good fastball hitter. And a better hitter with runners on. And San Jose State down by three, running out of outs. We're in the top of the seventh. If they're going to rally, they need to do something. Another high fastball. Everything has been upstairs that has missed in this league from Dome every fastball. And that's a sign of fatigue. They're starting to get some action up in the bullpen. That was his 81st pitch of the game. Breaking pitch. Sky to right center. So Tognetti can't advance the runner and keep anything going. And Fagan will. And O'Brien and Babbins. It's another magnificent crowd. We'll give you those numbers in a second. As Fagan stands in, 0 for 2 tonight, 2 for 6 in the College World Series. Another crowd over 23,000 here tonight. 23,016. And they just continue to turn out brilliant support for this event. And this is an elimination game, and they still come to, to, That's right. to watch you play. I mean, this is. You know what was really nice? We're staying in the same hotel with a lot of the LSU fans. And the LSU fans are coming out to support the Raging Cajuns tonight. I think it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. it is nice. Hit it. Sounded uh, like it hit him. Well, I thought it did too. I heard something, and it looked like it hit him on the shoulder. He's not saying anything though. Yes, not. Sometimes there's a string hanging off the catcher's glove, and that that little nick. But if you heard it up here, we got some great ears, Mike. <laughs> oh, they got some great, great microphones, microphones down there. <laughs> Our audio guys are all over it. <laughs> Two and out of the big breaking pitch. Hit yeah. deep. Sitting on the slider, got one and ripped it. Maybe that ball did nick him and he said, forget it, I gotta go deep right here. John Fagan with his 13th home run of the year. He is their power guy. The only one in double figures in home runs. And he's made it a one-run game. Well, Mike, you're right. He got a slider and he was looking to go deep and he crushed it. Jumped on it, stayed. The only question was, look at him, Carlton Fist, stay fair, stay fair for me. And they say it hooked around the pole. Well, Al Davis, the third base umpire, was right on the line. He had a better view than anybody in the ballpark and made the call right. The other thing that was nice about that is it stayed below the, pow the pole. It yeah. wasn't over the pole where you had to make a tough judgment. He stayed inside the pole. That baby was smoked. Yes, it was. Hey, His mother Nancy loving every second of that as her son John gets his 13th home run and 47th RBI. John pretty happy about himself. And just like the LSU fans are here watching Louisiana Lafayette, the Stanford fans have hung out to yeah. watch San Jose State. San Jose about a half hour drive to Palo Alto. And most of the fans here who are from Omaha, they're making up the overwhelming majority of the crowd. They just root for everybody. And Dolman has just really lost everything high. The only thing he can get over is the slider. And as you saw, he hung that last of the movie through. Douglas, two for two. Not a power guy, only two home runs. But their hottest hitter in the postseason. Turns on the face. Three for three. What would Douglas have done if they found those glasses early in the season? He might have hit 400 the way he's showing tonight. Well, let's go back and look at a 400 swing, Mike. Now, it's World Series. Who does this remind you of? I know you're a baseball historian. Watch this. 
Is that Carlton Fisk or what? Come on, ball. Stay fair. And the catcher says, get running. <laughs> Masiati didn't like him standing there beside him. <laughs> Thought maybe you're trying to show my pitcher up. Get out of here. Oh, that was a great shot. Great camera work, guys. Excellent. Well, Mike, the Bulldogs gave him some innings that they needed. Yes, he did. Show. We'll send him to the bench. He knows he got all he could out of Scott Doman tonight. And while we've got a moment, the teams have been kind enough to give us a sneak peek all week behind the scenes of the College World Series. Here is your San Jose State All Access Pass. Uh, you, figure, you figure we're on for uh, six o'clock. We may, they may push. That may push us back a little bit because they're going to go 45 minutes usually, right, Dave? Do we have do we have any change in our starting time? Do we know? Let me go check. Okay. okay. Scouting report is is that he likes to get the right-handers to chase that, that pitch out of the strike zone. That's probably you'll get some of those. So that's why you know if you you know, you've got to look for that fastball, especially early in the count. Okay. It's it's up. It's you know probably mid to upper 80s. Okay. And he's good. That statistic there. That's misleading. That's a, that's only about a that's about a 65 to 70 percent max success rate. Okay. You know we're probably gonna get delayed, delayed at least 40 minutes past than we thought we would. 14, Khalil Green, third base. Yeah, we're gonna get after him. Nice Take job. Thank you. Thank you. Good Take luck. Two. When right. you guys go again? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. We'll All right. Yeah. Okay, babe. Show everybody you belong. You deserve to be here, and let's go play our butts off tonight. Okay. We're on schedule. Uh, let's get those arms loose. We've got about 11 minutes to in and out. Good luck tonight, man. Go get them. That was Sam Ferraro, and uh, you saw the uh, relationship that he has with the uh, Stanford coaching staff. They're close friends. Uh, they root for each other, and they say the one thing they would love to do is, uh, you know, be able to play each other because you want the other guy to do well until you play him, and then you want to beat his brains out. And, and Console him when the game's over. <laughs> That's what sports is all about. Gordon O'Brien is the new pitcher, a sophomore from Montreal, Quebec, 6'5, 220. And this guy can bring some heat. Well, he's going to show you a fastball that's electrifying. It'll be in the mid 90s. And then he's going to break a break off a nice little slider. Those are his two pitches that he's going to have to throw. We got a ball game. He would easily rank among the nation's leaders in strikeouts per inning if he had enough innings to qualify for nine innings, 15 to two. So he gets some people swinging and missing. And Adam Shorcher, the catcher, stands in. A runner at first, one gone, two runs in in the inning. And Harold, you're right. We've got a ball game, four, three, and the seven. Slider for a strike. This is fun. This is fun. Isn't you know, it? Gives you something to think strategy and well, Douglas down at first if you're thinking Steele has only a single stolen base this year. He goes. Hit and run, they fan out, and he's in there. Well Maziati was ready to come up and let it go, and it looked like Ball may have broke a little bit more than he anticipated it. Wasn't able to handle it. Douglas, like you said, Mike, he only had one stolen base. You see Maziati actually looking to throw before he caught the ball, and oh, it stuck by him. His head came up just enough. So now the time runs at second for Schorcher. Fouls it out of play. Stays alive at one and two. Doman went six in the third, gave up five hits, three runs, two of them were earned. Two walks, two strikeouts, and 88 pitches. Oh, Gordy, be careful. Right down, make sure you get the out. He gave him more than they could ask for. You know, they weren't expecting him to go as long as he did. Stands to be the winner. All right. Gordon O'Brien can hold it for him. 
They've done a nice job of mixing pitches. You know, continually be impressed with the way Masiati calls the game. This ball just does not break back, though. So sometimes you throw what it's called a backdoor slider, and this is it right here. It doesn't break, it just stays back inside, and that's why it's called backdoor, because it's supposed to break back over the plate. It didn't break, and it froze the hitter. The number nine hitter, Gary Patchett, has walked and popped out in the dirt. Nice block by Masiati. The runner goes, and he can't come up with it. It's going to be a wild pitch on O'Brien. Almost acting as if he was crossed up. Runner at second, you go at multiple signs, and that's when you do see a cross up. We'll get a good look here. The ball bounce, he anticipated it. Yeah. But he thought at first it looked like he was going to say to the umpire, the, the batter's got to get out of the way, but he's got a right to the batter's box. He just threw a 50 foot curveball. That's all that was. Now a runner at third. Fastball low. Well, Mike, if he's having trouble bouncing balls, it takes away. Fortunately, Masiati's blocking the ball no, no, for him. But if the come. pitcher doesn't feel like he has the confidence, that makes it better for the hitter. He takes away a pitch from him. Two outs, a runner at third. The tying run. Right back to the Knocks it down and makes the play. San Jose State gets two, and the Spartans are back with inner run as we go to the bottom of the seventh. O'Brien gets the third out of the seventh inning. Loving it. Louisiana Lafayette with a 4-3 lead over San Jose State. They have led all the way. 2-0 in the first and 2-1. 4 to 1 and now 4 to 3. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. David. All right, Bill Fagan is here. John Fagan's dad. How far did you drive exactly? How long did it take you to get here? I looked at 1,838 miles when we uh, when we drove up and parked. It took us a couple days. A couple days, yeah. and I imagine it was well worth it. A absolutely. That home run, I'd have driven twice the amount. It was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Thanks so much for joining us. You bet. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of it. Thank you. Proud pop right here, guys. All right, yeah. David. Well, he should be. That makes that trip seem short. If they had told him his son was going to hit a two-run homer in this game, he'd have uh, yeah, and he'd have got here faster. That's special to that. Jarvis Larry leads it off in the seventh against Adenolfi. That's one of the neatest things about the College World Series is how much the parents are involved with their kids' lives. You tend to forget that. Turn on the TV and watch them play. And what they have to go through in order to see their kids play. We got to work, back to work. There is a work day on Monday for most, and uh, take a time off to try to raise a family. When they live and die with every pitch, too. Mm. 
Jarvis Larry 0 for 2 tonight. Swings and misses on a fastball. And he's going to make it 0 for 3, his second time striking out. Scott Atwood, who stayed on to play first base after pinch hitting. He's 0 for 1, hit the ball on the button, but lined the left. Atwood's average only 204 this season. That oh. also gets it up there pretty well, doesn't it? It does. I was just thinking that. Oh! To the gap in right center. This will go to the wall. Atwood will hold it second with a stand-up double, a ringing shot to the wall. They got a breaking pitch out over the plate. It was a very nice swing. You get a good look here. He's got the open stance, and Mike who brings the legs back. Watch him close his stance, stay with the ball, and drive this thing behind. He got right behind it and drove the ball into the gap. Very nice piece of hitting. Number nine man in the order, Rick Heidel. You wouldn't know it. He's two for two. And three for six in the College World Series, including a home run and a double. And he hits it to straightaway right. Mackey was set by the runner tags. And that would bless the start. They know the scouting report on Mackey has a good accurate arm. Louisiana Lafayette tonight, six hits, a single, four doubles, and a home. Watch the base runner, Atwood. As soon as the ball's hit, he's going to look at the third base coach. Watch this. He'll turn around and go, should I come or shouldn't I? By the time you do that, it's too late. That ball behind you there, you can set up, and you should be able to know if you're able to make it or not. Obviously, the coach made the right judgment call by not challenging the arm. But there are certain plays that as you run the bases, you should be able to instinctively know what you can or can't do, and that's maybe because he hasn't been on base so much this year. Right. He's a really 204 hitter. Feehan, who got his first hit of the college World Series last time, gets it up and wraps it up. He throws up, this comes up to get him. Feehan, who has reached his last two times up after going 0 for 6, and it puts them back up by 2. And that's another reason the coach held him up, because, again, you're going to score on a base hit from second base. No need to force and make the third out of third. Feehan gets a fastball first pitch, and he's hacking. Drives one out there. This is the third first pitch fastball he swung at tonight. He hasn't put it in play, but this one he does. And he... Drives it in the left field for the RBI. When Douglas had the opportunity on a hard hit ball, he's coming straight forward, all his momentum behind him, and the throw was short and off the line. Strike call as Gill take the ball. But obviously, in this situation, we're running for a base hit. Mm -hmm. And he's got some speed. Dorsher came up ready to throw down the first. But Steve Feehan got back. Two outs, a run in. Here in the home half of the seventh for the Raging Cage. Second base is playing. That's why he was trying to push that ball towards first, that first pitch. Pick up when he's playing. Here's the second baseman right here. And when, you, when you're trying to bunt for a push, you want to put that ball right in this area. And that's what he was looking to do with the push bunt on the first pitch. Obviously, with two strikes, he's not going to do that now. Ryan Gill was the third Cajun ever named as the most outstanding player in a regional. He won the award when they got to play at home at Lafayette this year. This guy's an interesting player, really. We talked about it.
his ability to pitch and how hard he throws. And he's got some nice actions out in the infield at second base. Yes, he, is. he swings the bat. He's hitting at a 345 clip. Versatile athlete. In the regional brings the MVP. He hit five to three So when the uh, Yankees get him as a pitcher, well, the American League is not going to be able to hit anyway, so. Here's a breaking ball. He stays down through it. He waits for the ball to get to him and hammers it back up the middle. And Adenolfi has been touched for three hits here in the seventh. You have to hand it to Louisiana Lafayette. They were challenged from the top of the inning, so the lead cut the run. Do it's just in the reverse. You want your pitcher to come out and shut him down. Come out and talk to Adam Alfie. He's the guy they wanted in here. Plenty of action in their bullpen in case they want to go that way. And he's got two outs. If he can just get through this. Uh, Sandler and Murphy, you see out there, warning. They'll be facing the number three hitter Nathan Nelson, who has drawn the collar tonight and is only one for seven. Smoke back up the middle. Nice stop by Screen. Screen saves a run, scaring a shot. Back up the middle. But the Rangers Cajuns get one to go up by two again. Louisiana is in the same situation we are. What do we call this game usually? Yeah, it's a do or die ball game. Loser goes home. Louisiana's thinking the same thing we are. They don't want to be the first team to exit this thing. You got two teams with a lot of character, like we talked about yesterday, and neither one wants to go home. So who wants it? Who wants to stay here? That's what it boils down to. Who wants to stick around? And we've got two innings to find out as Sam Ferraro seen his team respond. Got in that 4-1 lead. They made it 4-3. Louisiana Lafayette comes back to make it 5-3. And now the Spartans go to the eighth with the top of their order. They lead it off and takes a breaking ball from Gordon O'Brien low. Now now be interesting if they start trying to take a strike to get a runner on base, doing little things like that. Fastball inside. Rucker not afraid to get hit by a pitch, do anything to get on. But that one run really changes how you play this inning. Now they're not going to bunt if he gets on to move him over. When you've only got six outs left, it's tough to give one up to move a single runner around. Mm -hmm. well, anything inside, look for any of these guys to lean into it. Go, go, Smart. <laughs> and a runner on on the base on ball, so the potential tying run comes to the plate.
Green 0 for 3 tonight. In the uh, first game, he went 2 to 4, and now we'll turn around and bat left hand. Where's the butt? Takes it high. You know, until he throws a strike, Mike, you go ahead and take the strike. That's five straight balls. Well, you just know from what the coaches were saying, though, Stream hates to go up there thinking, take a couple of pitches. He wants to hack away. Well, now's the time you give it to him as a coach. Hey, you're taking it. That's exactly what he's doing. Yep. All he's trying to do with that bunt is to distract the pitcher. Sam Ferraro hoping for a base hit here. Got the three, four, five guys coming up if they can keep this rally going. Brandon Mackey on deck. Breaking ball hangs high, two and one. The one thing about Screen is he's probably not going to hit into a double play unless he smokes one at somebody. Because he can run. He can run. And he'll pull the ball. It's harder to turn a double play from, from second from the right side of the infield back and then back to first base than it is from the shortstop on over. Mackey 14 will lose seven when they hit. Break the ball to the foul. And two. Hey, heat the ball, little guy. Here we go, baby. Base hit now. Gordon O'Brien comes in with a little guy on two and one and throws in the breaking point. Apparently, Gordon O'Brien is not going to back down and give in to anybody either. No, he's not. And so often, that's how you pitch. You know, before, as a hitter, I'd be like, challenge somebody. Let's go. And I realized, well, if that's what they're supposed to do, <laughs> that's right. Get me out of a pitch I can't hit. <laughs> Two and two to stream. Full count. This will get interesting right here. Yeah, Trying to right. run or not. The three, four, five men in the order tonight, the guys that are waiting to hit behind the top of the order, are old. Something for it. Let's go. They have drawn the collar, a single base on ball, the only base runner for the heart of the order. And the six and seven guys, oh, Douglas and Fagan. They beat him right here, kid. Let's go. Come through. The rest of the lineup as a group. Working on a one for 20. Even. Base hit ball for him. Stream surgery after he got hit around the right eye in the orbital bone. What a tough kid he is. What he had to go through and how quickly he came back. So you got a battler on your hands in this situation. He's going to put the ball in play. He's going to battle. And plus, you got a pitcher you know, right with a high leg kick. And Rucker's a pretty good runner, so he got a good jump last time. I'm sure he'll be off running again. They hold him, and this one's chopped right back to the man. Particularly with a 5-3 ball game, you go ahead and go to second. Maybe somebody missed a sign and didn't run. I don't know what happened there because he got a great jump on the pitch before. But he makes a decision to go ahead and go, and it is bang, bang. And that's the way it's been tonight. San Jose State has been within inches of having things turn around for them. And you've got to credit Louisiana Lafayette for its execution. Mm -hmm. Mackey, eight home runs on the year. One swing could tie this game with O'Brien way upstairs for that. These are the guys that it rests on. Three, four, and five. If they produce, they will win. If they don't, they won't. And they've said that all year. As they go, so will our team. And it's no different tonight. Mackey with a 12-game hit streak on the line. Takes a breaking ball for a ball strike. Hitting 380 during that streak with a couple of diggers, only with eight on the year. One out, one on. That's slow to the top of the break. He took one and two. The right side of a guy that's going to throw a lot of break attempts is the defensive alignment. And you get a good chance to see how they're, they're positioning. 
him against him. Now, third baseman is not even in the picture. Watch how we pan around. Look at how far over the third baseman is playing. He slapped the ball down that line. Now it's second and third. He's a long ways off the line. Number two just came alive. Pop Pinson. But that tells me they're going to stay in on his hands. Inside, inside, inside. Most philosophies late in the game, when you get to the power guys, you make them beat you the opposite way. And particularly the way the ball is carried tonight, force them to have to hit a ball outside. Now here, look at this. He's got all this area through here. That ball there is going to be a double. Third baseman is generally where I do that arrow. And he'd be standing right in that area, that spot right there. One and two to Brandon Mackey. Another breaking ball popped up on the infield. Nelson outside of third and foul territory. Two down. Very crisp, fast pace. 
Many mistakes, strategy, home runs, great defensive efforts, had it all. And we're not done. Nope. We're at the best part now. One home run all of last year has now hit 15 this season. Screamer, diving attack on Patrick Ray is going to the left field for a base hit. Masiati has two on the night. Join ESPN and ESPN2 this Wednesday for a baseball triple header. Starting at one on ESPN2, the Red Sox go to New York and take down the Yankees. Then at seven, the White Sox and the Indians do battle on ESPN. Then at 10, back here on ESPN2, the Dodgers hosting Arizona. Triple out of this Wednesday on ESPN and ESPN2. And the Yankees and Mets, we are told, officially postponed the season. So I hope you stay with us. And watch this one because we have a good ball game here. An elimination Sunday game. Louisiana Lafayette and San Jose State. And Brett Bailey will call on as the pinch hitter. For Will Hawkins. They have one city, Louisiana, junior, 5'10, 210 pounds. Let's see if he's up there to bunt against Adenoff. Well, Mike, oftentimes they use that move right there to see what the, cat, the hitter is going to do if he. Fudges with the bat or anything, it looked like he started to go ahead to the butt position. Now you know what they're going to try to do, and you charge hard. Sure enough, they the ball, pops it up, and caught by the catcher, Shorshin. So Bailey can't get his job done, pops up the attempted sacrifice. Well, he didn't get the bat head out. That's the problem here. Watch this. Pushes at the bunt. And that's how he popped it up. Whenever you want to bunt, let's go to my bat rack again. You want to set your angle and let the ball come to you. You don't go out here. Now you got force coming against force, and that's when you pop it up. But if you give, that's when you'll that's when you die, and you'll be able to get the bunt down. And that's what happened to him right there. Tough pitch to bunt is a high fastball, and that's what he tried to bunt. Clark indicated he wanted to bunt. Hit by a pitch. And officially 0 for 2 tonight. Whereas again, there's a pitch out. Go back to your bat rack for a second. Okay. Bat rack for a second. I'm back. And now show me the grip and show me how you don't get your fingers crushed, which is the first thing they try to teach. Well, you want to you want to definitely hide your hands behind the, the bat so that when the ball hits here, you don't want to do this. Expose your fingers. You see so many guys having their fingers even at this level, and some in the major leagues that have their fingers around like that and they can still get one well, the other thing that happens is you can adjust you can slide the hands up to give you a little more bat control right. and still be able to do it one great drill Willie Starzl he was a great hitter but he taught me to bunt one handed I would bunt one handed like this and work on bunting off a machine just one hand one hand and that way you become a better bunter. just little simple things like that even a great hitter like Willie Starzl how did Willie Starzl ever think about bunting? He played with some great players, so obviously he picked something up around the batting cage. But uh, yeah, I bet well, nobody ever asked Willie to lay one down. I wouldn't know. <laughs> one and one, one out, a runner on here in the bottom of the eighth. Tommy Clark standing in against Tim Adolfi. <laughs> The catcher with seven stolen bases this year. You like this closet, huh? I 
love it. I think it's a, a great way for you to demonstrate the way things should be done and should not be done. Did a nice job of making him continue to chase a pitch outside. He went further out on each pitch to get him to chase a ball out of the zone. Two out there in the first four. D.H. Jarvis Larry. Three for six in the College World Series, but all for three tonight. Breaking ball down low, blocked by Shorsha. I said Larry was over three and a sacrifice fly, so officially over two. And the average at two, six, nine. <laughs> Takes a good hack. It seems like he's always got an idea what he's trying to do at the plate. Yep, last night he was pulling the ball. Today they're pitching him outside. He's going to hit the ball in the right field. As long as you got a plan, you give yourself a chance. One on one with Maziotti. Down at first and two gone in the home half of the eighth. The elimination Sunday night game of the College World Series. Which of these first timers will be the first to go home? ESPN 2's presentation of the NCAA College World Series is brought to you by the ridiculously easy to use eye control setting systems from Timex. By Mitsubishi Motors, makers of the new 2001 Eclipse Spider, Wake Up and Drive. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. When the moment comes, will you have what it takes to finish? Gatorade, is it in you? Steve 
Jordan Murphy, a senior from South San Francisco, California. Steve Murphy's going to feature a fastball that's mid-80s. He is the lone winning pitcher against Tampa this year in the regular season. And they say he has a knack for getting out of jams. And Mike, no greater time than now to get out of jam with the runner on second with two outs. They can't afford to give up anything else. Murphy facing Atwood, who is one for two, came on as a pinch hit, stayed on the play first, had a double, and scored a run in the seventh his last time up. Scott Doman, the starter for ULL. Here's Chris, here's Yvette, the parents. We gotta ask you about the hair. Let's take the hat off and explain it. Well, I told the team if they make it to Omaha, I'd shave my head. They told me, no, I gotta dye. And I tried to make it blonde, but it didn't come out this right. What's your natural color, Chris? Uh, gray. <laughs> How nerve-wracking is it to watch your son pitch to start this game? Very nerve-wracking, very nerve-wracking. I'm just stomach cramps everything else. <laughs> we see you cheering up the storm here. Is it easier once your son has left the game to cheer? I'm sorry? Is it easier once your son has left the game to Much easier. Mark? Much easier after you leave the game. I wish you could have finished, but I'm glad that Gordy's in there doing his job. That's, that's what they've been doing all year long. Congratulations. You, your hair looks great, Chris. Thank you. Guys? Dave, you're a good liar. Gordon O'Brien is in trying to save it for Scott Doman. He will face Tognetti, Fagan, and Douglas. Last chance for the Spartans of San Jose State. And the emotional ride both of these teams are on. It's got to be such a thrill, San Jose State getting here for the first time, Louisiana Lafayette, and yet all that joy goes away, boom, if you lose tonight. Now you've got to go home. Tough, tough, tough memories. You know, this is one of those heartbreak games. You, you, you don't mind if you get beat 15 to two. It's not as, it doesn't hurt as much. That's right. Tognetti is 0 for 3. Strike call from Gordon O'Brien. 
He has not thrown many fastballs for strikes. On deck, Fagan and Douglas. Douglas has been the hitting star in that three for three. Fagan has a home run. Another breaking pitch high. This has been a, a very nice like, umpire game. Wiley Burleson, Mascaro, and Davis have done a nice job. Sometimes we're all too quick to criticize the umpires and not acknowledge when they do very well. Oh, yeah. And there's a base on ball. You're absolutely right, Mike. Stay tuned following our game right here on ESPN2. RPM tonight with Reese Davis. Get all the highlights analysis and behind the scenes. Cognetti draws a walk with nobody out in the ninth for Fagan, who homered his last time up. That's how important that last run they picked up last inning is, because with the two-run home run, the tie ball game. Three is tough to get. The heart of the order has become six and seven, as you saw on that last panel. Four out of six for Fagan and Douglas. Fagan the home run. Douglas with a double and two singles. came in the game as uh, you see the action in the bullpen. O'Brien was throwing fastballs and getting them over. Then he switched to the slider. And that has been his consistently used pitch. Another fastball and that one hit him. No, it hit the bat this say. Well, big intelligent player trying to do anything. He knows we're down three, not two. So a home run right here is not going to help. Here it is, the ball inside. He tries to check the swing, and well, the catcher actually grabbed his jersey. It's so loose, it didn't hit him, but the glove grabbed the part of his jersey that was hanging out. He thought he might get away with it. Good there we go. The, way, the home plate umpire. Here's the one and two. Struck him out. Beautiful breaking ball from O'Brien. There's the slider you're talking about, Mike. I was going to say. He's really mixing it up nice. Oh, he had him set up for it after that inside fastball. There it is right there. Get a good look at the spin. But you're right. He set him up with the inside fastball that almost hit him and then busted him away with the breaking pitch. Here is Rob Douglas. Three for three and four for seven in the College World Series. The hitting star for the San Jose State Spartans. If you missed the story earlier, he had a disappointing season. He needed glasses. They made multiple trips to the doctor. Finally found something that worked for him. He's going to make sure those specs are clean for this at bat. He's got some small peepers up there, too, man. Look at how small those glasses are. Something bionic in there. Those are the game glasses. He's reading. He's reading the scene. <laughs> He's done a great job of it, too. Swung over the top of the slide. 0 and 2. Well, you called it. Swung over the top of the slider. And here's the ball. He just swings over the top. That's what it looks like. It did, broke down a little harder than he thought it was. But he read the break. Just didn't judge it. A double and two singles for Rob Douglas, the senior from Hayward, California. He needs another one for his ball. The breaking ball hangs high and outside. And again, when he has missed, he's missed high, but he's missed out of the zone most of the time. That's why Tony's rubbing his eyes. He's going, don't miss up there. The pressure on Tony Robichaux. His club up six. Three in the ninth. They stay alive if they win the night, and San Jose State has to go home. Looks like 
like a breaking pitch, maybe even a split. I'm not sure if he throws a split or not, but it had great split action. And I think Mike, we're going to see a pinch hitter. Mike Gray, a junior outfielder from the Southwell, Washington, from the Bellevue Community College. Only recruit on the ball club out of the state of California. Hometown Issaquah, Washington. I lived in Issaquah when I played for the Mariners. It's just out. I said Issaquah, right? I didn't mean to offend anybody. Issaquah, like you could uh, Issaquah. get that one.